1897. Time, 17th of December, 1897. Mr. Frederick Main, who understood his Mr. Terrence on the part of Captain Thorne, had a peculiar story to tell. Not again. He said, I dreamt about this very thing last night, and when I came to the theatre this morning for the rehearsal, I told all the boys about it. John! I dreamt I saw Mr. Terrace lying in the landing, surrounded by a crowd, and that he was raving. Yep. I seemed to see it all, and then it all seemed to fade away. It was a horrible Have dream. you been fiddling with my tape recorder? I meant. I tried to forget it during the day, but... Yes, you have, you bugger. When I came to the theatre, I was going down Bedford Street... Something seemed to say, do not go there. As I was walking on the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. Just to God it go away. John, got a casting for you. Five-hander. Tour, a bit of a ball-breaker, but it's got a goodish chance of coming in. Ring me soonest. I'll give you all the gory details. We present The Understudy by Joe Anderson. With Nigel Anthony as John, Francis Jeter as Jen, and Michael N. Harbour as Paul. The Understudy. Understudy? Jesus, Morris! You said you fancied getting away from London for a bit, earning some decent lollies. Well, yeah, but I didn't mean... I mean, <laughs> I thought you were sounding out a rep for me. Rep and decent lolly sounds ridiculous whichever way you say it. Yes. Look, meet me for lunch. I'll pay. Oh, I don't believe I'm hearing this. Come to Covent Garden, say 1pm tomorrow, the Nelgwyn pub, Maiden Lane. Never heard of it. John, it's not a bad play, you know. Not Don't Chase Me Up Your Jedi, I'm British, you mean. Okay, we can hang out for the telly a bit longer. I can't, Morris. Not that I fancy getting away from London for a bit, I just have to. Not the fish nor fowl. You're not actually performing a part like everybody else. Not cast, not in your own right. Can I get to that part? Part of the company and not part of it. Tell him you'll wait for something else. What, then. my next restart interview? It's not as if you've been doing anything all bloody day. I've been researching my one man show. Okay. Yes, frigging one man show. Frigging one man show. The one you've been researching for a couple, yeah, of, a hundred couple of hundred years. years. Yes, that's a frigging one man show. I'll get it together. Sure, and then they can be the next director general. Uh, serve them right. Look, will you. Look, I'm, I'm asking for some help here. Pass that saucepan, please. Oh, all right. All right. So nobody knows how to relate to you socially. Consequently, nobody tries, and there are no terms of reference, common ground, you see. I can just dimly remember what acting is like. Be like a spare prick at a wedding, and then there's... Oh, I don't know, self-esteem, I suppose. You could at least have washed up the breakfast things. I forgot to go to the laundrette, too. What are you going to do, cut my allowance off as well? Look, let me have a quiet word with someone on the radio drama rep. Or me on the studio floor, the rest nudging, nudging each other, my wife issuing directives down from the producer's box, you mean. Oh... Come here. Forget into me, Jen. Shh. The fact that he could not get employment would aggravate his mental condition, and all the distress and anxiety which he suffered then would make his condition worse. That doesn't sound like you. No, it isn't. But I'm beginning to understand what the poor bugger was going through. You're Breezy Bill? No. You know, I've always thought of myself as a mainstream actor. The truth is, I haven't even got a toe in the water. I'm up on the bank, high and dry, along with the other flotsam. Here, I thought it was me who was thinking of taking HRT. <laughs> think there's anything in it for me? Promise me you'll think about it. What, hormone replacement therapy? You know what I mean. A quiet word with a chum. Promise? Yeah. Uh, turn cup and garden, please. Mind the gates. Mr. St. John Denton, theatrical agent of Maiden Lane, said he first became acquainted with him during a run of Black-Eyed Susan, a melodrama, stated he possessed great histrionic ambition, called nearly every day for employment, thought himself a great actor, said it because what's a twice he got a couple of lines to speak. My lord, the carriage waits. Wanity, disappointed wanity and ambition, that's what I calls it. He offered him an engagement in Newcastle. But... Oh. I'm the gates. One ham sandwich and one Cornish pasty. Lunch? Oh. You're really busting the bag, aren't you, Morris? 
Eat your pasty before I bite ten percent out of that as well. Mm. It's quite of the grave in here. Oh, you should see it when there's a show on. They come over the alley from the Adelphi like a horde of rampaging savages at interval time. And two best bitters. Ta, love. But cheerio, John. If you say so. Oh, Christ. It's 17 years since I did a tour. The Vine, Wolverhampton, Prompt Copy, South Sea. Mm. Val and Harry's professional apartment. The Turkish Delights in, in Newcastle. Rattles all. <laughs> Jim was an ASM then. We haven't been hitched long. There you are then. Trip down memory lane. Ah, but then I was in the RSU, love. <laughs> oh, I shouldn't be doing this. Oh, mm. half won't hurt you. My good daughter, she of the hotel and scholarly Mian, not to mention Jen, would say, you are not right. Well, my daughter would say it by fax machine. How is Jen? Um, just walking under study. You're sure there are no hidden strings? I'm not expected at the advanced age of 49 to ASM as well, do the ironing, hump the scenery, walk on as a speechless major domo. I must go. Look, John, you're just there to cover your principle. Oh, yes, yes, I know what a walking understudy is, Morris. Ciao, John. Uh, yes. But do you know, Morris, old cocker, who, I mean who, I've got to play second fiddle too? What? I can't hear I you. I said you're drunk. <sighs> Look, I, I, I've decided. It's, it's a good John, idea. John, I'm in the middle of editing. I can... Oh, look, I, just get out of your hair for what? a bit. What? Cut it, wait. I said I'm thinking of taking it. It's a blow to the old ego. Yeah, yeah, but, I'm know... on the other line. Look, John, now's not the time. Did you hear what I said? You're taking the tour. Why are you ringing me now? Well, I, I thought... I wanted you to... I was hoping look, that you... Look, if you've made up your mind, I'm sorry, I've got to go. I, I thought you'd tell me that you wanted me at home, you cow. Excuse me, mister. Can you spare me some change? Oh. <laughs> what are you playing at? Can you spare me some change to get something to eat? I'm sorry, I, I thought you were someone else. Yeah, here. Yeah, a handful of 10-piece surplus uh, to requirements. I thank you. As a Highlander and a gentleman. Don't mention it. Oh, what the hell was in that bitter? Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, ta. Yo, oh, hold it. There's a bloke behind me. Oh, that's funny. He must have gone up the stairway. Huh. Well, he's a better man than I am, Gungan. Oh, sorry. Mind the gates. <laughs> Cross-examined Mr. St. John Denton said he noted nothing strange about the prison then. <clears throat> Bell size laundry services. Do I have Mr. John Stanger's number, please? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm a bit pissed at the moment. Yes, John Stanger speaking. Oh, Mr. Stanger, this is Lindy Giles, <clears> our <throat> deputy stage manager on dinner party. Just to let you know that a motorbike courier's on his way with the script, and I have your call for tomorrow. We're in a rehearsal room in Covent Garden. Uh, where do you want me to sit? <laughs> there won't be much sitting, I'm afraid. A bit of a tall order, but you'll have to read in for Paul all week. Read in? I thought I'd just be sitting on the sidelines and marking his moves. Where's he? Doing a telly. Oh, don't worry, he'll mm. be there on the first performance in Newcastle next Monday. I should bloody well hope so. <laughs> It'll give you a chance to go through your paces, won't it? Yeah. I look forward to meeting you at 10am tomorrow morning. Uh, yep. Thanks. Till then, then. <clears throat> oh, Jesus. Hmm. Cross-examined. Is it correct to say that he was very calm? Answer, Yes. Did his calmness surprise you at all? Yes, in fact, may I say, he was... He was extraordinarily calm. Answer. Well, was he extraordinarily calm under the circumstances? Answer. He just asked for some change to get something to eat. Well, so what? 
There are any number of poor buggers begging in the street today. What the hell other words would they use if they, after a few quit? Yep. Express package for Mr. J. Stanger. <clears throat> I thank you as a Highlander and a gentleman. Well, you going to pick this up, then? Well, just uh, leave it on the step, will you? Yeah, you've got a sign for it. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, look, hang on a minute, will you? Now, where's the bloody... Uh, ah. Prisoner had written my boxes at the dock for passage to Newcastle, but I have not a shilling to call my own. Uh, <clears throat> I thought I might get something in town, but for the last six or seven years I've not been able to get... Oh, Christ. Uh, if you will only help me, I will... Thank you, as a Highlander and a gentleman. What Paul does is to break down stage a little here. Can you uh, can you do that? Yes, okay, yes, sir. <clears throat> um, there was no blinding light, no heavenly voices. You have my dossier. We both worked as salesmen before the war. Both know the value of competitor assessment. <laughs> Fulfillment. Quite so. It's not difficult, Colonel, to see that I wanted to do something useful, worthwhile, dangerous, even. Isn't it true? One has to experience the fear of death to know what it is to feel truly alive. The means by which things fell suddenly so irrevocably into place would not meet with your approval. Interesting, isn't it? Who knows? We might even have passed each other in the street in Palestine. We were there at the same time. Uh, my line, old chap. What? Oh, sorry. We were there at the same time. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. You want out? Where are you? Around the corner. We broke it for lunch. Look, I, I haven't signed a contract You're yet. You're a day into rehearsal. You've accepted by starting work. What the hell's the matter, John? Oh, it's torture, Morris, standing there uttering lines that I... It, 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 it's like working up a feast I'm never going to bloody well eat. You're too good for understanding No, me. no, no, it's not that. It's not that I have delusions of grandeur. It's just its just that there's something not quite right about well, all this. it's true. It's unusual for your principal to be away, but he's the great god, Telestar. Yeah, and that's another thing. I, I keep feeling I'm the, the one being shadowed, like there's somebody having a bloody good laugh behind some kind of screen, and I'm the only one who can't see round it. Oh, I, I, look, I'm sorry, Morris. I, that sounds utterly off the wall. Of course you can't get me out of it, and I'll do my best. Forget we had this conversation. Winge over. Cheers. Roll on Saturday. Why is it that the first things to disappear at rehearsal breaks are all the spoons I can carry? Oh, Peter, dear, have you got the spoon? Uh, no, lovey. No, no. <laughs> That's enough for me. Thank you. Five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, then act two, scene one, please. Oh, Peter, geez. have you set the props yet? Uh, I'm just finishing my no, coffee. Oh, please. God. <laughs> The things we have to do on the way up. Well, uh, no peace for the wicked, old boy. OK, John? Yeah, sure. When you're ready. Sure. Oh, Lindy. Hmm? Um, down there across the street, the tall bloke standing by the litter box. What, in the Long Mac? Yeah, that's the one. He's been hanging around here every day. He's just a down and out on the prod. Yeah, yeah. He touched me for a few bob. <laughs> it's a free country. Yeah, I suppose it is. Rehearsal over for the day? Kind of half and half, isn't it? Yeah, too. You're becoming quite a regular at the Nell Gwyn. Can't tear yourself away, eh? <laughs> no. No. No, I can't. Me and my shadow Walking down the avenue Me and my shadow. <laughs> Sorry, don't wait up. This damn feature's proving a marathon. Just put the oven on at 200, choose something from the freezer for yourself and heat it up. That's all right, I'll just shove a stick in it and suck it as it comes. Message number two. John. That's me. Not yet. Oh. Oh, you're so right, chum. Long live you and your wife, say I. Witness Charlotte Darby. 
Wife of omnibus driver Charles Darby, 1B Eaton Court, Buckingham Palace Road. Said prisoner asked for some hot food. Witness replied she had none. Said prisoner appeared to live on bread and milk. Was cheerful while in her lodging house and conducted himself like a gentleman. I'm thinking of what it would be like if she loved. Antioxidant acerbic monosodium glutam. Mm. Uh. E-150, 118, hydrolyzed mono oh, Bloody hell. <sighs> On Sunday, he said, then he expected news and it would be one way or the other. Witness did not understand what he meant. That is best known to God or man, prisoner replied. Then he said, what shall I do, Mrs. Darby? Witness replied, I do not know, Mr. Prince. I am sorry for you. But you, Stanger, do you just wait, the inevitable dear John? Or do you pick up that phone, dial her direct line, and check that she really is working late, or not? Not! Mm. You really don't want to know, do you, my boy? Whether Jen is in now? No, you do not wish to know that. Just act. You're good at that. Saturday night and we just got paid. Time, gents, let their good glasses, please. Time, gentlemen, please. You two, love. Drink up. Your last night, isn't it? Yeah. Missed it. We've just missed one, chum. Oh. Next train due four minutes. Mm. I believe you thousands wouldn't. <laughs> Your Honours, I have been three years at sea and have never looked upon or heard from my wife. As sweet a little craft as we has ever launched, Your Honours. I had come ashore and I was as lively as a petrel in a storm. I found my pretty little black-eyed Susan. That's my wife. All her guilt taken by land sharks, but yet all taut, with a face as red and rosy as the king's head on the side of a fire bucket. And, oh God, did they actually spout this stuff? Well, your honours, when we was as merry as a ship's crew on a payday, there comes an order to go aboard. I leave Susan. I hadn't been agone the turning of an hourglass when I heard my pretty little. Oh, Susan, giving signals of distress. I out me cutlass, made all said, and came up to my craft. I found her battling with a pirate. I never looked at his figurehead, never stopped. Why, I ask you, would any of your honours? Long live you and your wives, say I. <laughs> like a conjurer producing miles of ribbon from his mouth. <laughs> You're not wrong, Squire. <laughs> you stay right there, chum. Only room for one ding-dong on this bit of platform. <sighs> Two minutes. Come on, come on. Would any of your honours have rowed alongside as if you'd been going aboard a royal yacht? No. You wouldn't. <laughs> for the gilt swabs on the shoulders can't alter the heart that swells beneath. You would have done as I. 
as I did. And what did I? Why? I cut, cut him, him down, down like, like a, a piece, piece of, of old, old junk. junk. <laughs> yeah. White gloves. Yes, very nice. They're very nice. Here are my keys, lady. Hey, uh, uh, take care of the edge. Uh, you, you, you're too close to. The... There's a train. Take my keys, lady. What? Watch out! Uh, a man! Did you see that? A, a man! You get in on this train or not, mate? But you must have seen. Getting on. Find the gate. Hold it. Oh, thanks. No one uh, coming up behind you this time. But if there is, I don't want to see him again. Mind the gate. Chianti. It's anachronistic, isn't it? Well, why not? Why not? Yes, it's your last night and I'm late. I'm sorry. Why? You want to know that I'd stir stumps and cook you dinner? Eat your dessert. Okay. Mmm. Crap. Lovely. Oh, is that what it looks like? Supposed to be currant pie. Oh. I'm afraid it's gone a bit limp. <laughs> Why does everything sound like a doublon tonde? Because we don't talk anymore. Yes, we do. No, we don't, John. You do. What? Remind me of a man. What man? The man with the power. What power? The power of voodoo. Who do? You do. What? what? <laughs> oh, Jen. A funny thing happened to me on my way from the theatre tonight. Oh, see. Oh, darling, I'm sorry. You must be so tired. Uh, and goddamn that wide-eyed little boy lost look you always fix me with when I'm feeling in the wrong. Well, I get an eye transplant. Um, coffee? Mm, please. Oh. <laughs> oh, what's so funny? <laughs> oh, we have got some proper table candles in the drawer, you know. Well, I thought, you know, just an idea. We... We live our student days, right? Remember? What on earth for? Things seem so much simpler then. Did they? Oh, what a week. Is this the tour schedule? Yeah. It's a bit of a slog, John. Yeah. Morris put it more earthly. Still gets me out of your hair for a bit, doesn't it? Oh, Oxford. You'll be able to look up your daughter. Yeah, she'll love that. Does it play any good? Not bad. The dinner party. Those who do not remember the past are condemned to relive it. Sounds worthy. Anyone we know in it? One or two. Some youngsters fresh out of drama school. Oh! Henrietta Fox is playing the chances. <laughs> Old hot pants, Henry. You watch yourself, young man. <gasps> Edward Belling is the colonel. Yeah, you're born for England. You want uh, coffee made in this or cream? In your mind. Yeah? I show them to coffee made or cream? Black. Please. <clears throat> um, you didn't say it was Paul Anstruther you were understudying? Didn't I? Oh, shit. <sighs> oh, daft idea. There's no bringing back the past, is there? Isn't there? John? Oh, are you sitting there for? It can't be time to get up yet. Dear 
God, it's only 4.30. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to wake you up. What time's your train? Eight o'clock. You've got hours. You've done your packing, haven't you? Yep. Look, you go back to sleep. I'll, uh... Right. I'll switch the answer phone on on your way out, will you? Yeah. Oh, and don't forget to take your padded jacket. Your usual one's too thin for up there. Leave that out where I can find it. Right. I'll get it cleaned whilst you're away. Right. Well, good night. Mm. Good morning, you mean. Uh, Jen. Mm. The... There was a, a bloke on on the platform at Covent Garden Tube, mm. and he, he, he had white gloves on. Mm, terrific. And he could read my mind. Read mind. He, he walked towards me, that, and the, the, there was a train coming in, and he just kept walking. Mm. He walked s straight through the wall. Jen, I think I know who he was. Damn, we forgot to switch it on. Hello? John. Oh, you've just missed him. Can I take a message? Hang on while I find a pencil, will you? Far away. Not yet. Not yet? Is that it? You still there? Who shall I say? Well, more intriguing than... Good morning, madam. Haven't you given any thought to double glazing? Oh, John. Why didn't I tell you last night? It's going to be that much harder now. <sighs> Bailey or College, Porter's Lodge. You've told him? No, and that's the point of this call. Why not? Just listen. He left this morning to do a tour. It's going to play Oxford. Oh, God. If he looks you up, will Which he... he will, of course. Oh, Mum, I don't think I can go through another episode like the last one. Why the hell didn't you tell him? I couldn't. And neither must you. Oh, what do you expect me to do, Mum? Try to be kind, Molly, that's all. Bye. Leave the cruelty to me. Newcastle. This is Newcastle. The train now standing at Platform 5 is the delayed intercity to Edinburgh. We apologise to passengers for the delay due to signal failure in the York area. Right, Bonnie lad, turn left up the stairs. I know, and keep going. Do I get oxygen at the halfway stage? <laughs> he left the Adelphi for Newcastle. <sighs> to get more money in a travelling <sighs> company. He said his experience justified him playing better parts that he had played important parts in the past at the... Oh, shut up. <sighs> at last. I'm no oh, Stanger, you're out of condition. Mr. Stanger, to the stage, please. Oh, good luck. What? Well, I've just got here. First meeting, page four. Got it? Lindy, we're losing time. Yeah, but, uh, uh Paul, why, why do I... That's 24. I had to leave, sudden business. Don't worry, he'll be here on the night. Well, tonight is the night. Is the understudy here yet? Yeah, coming. Yeah, I don't need the script. No blinding lights, no heavenly voices. You have my dossier. We've both worked as salesmen before the war, both know the value of competitor assessment. Mm. Fulfilment. Quite so. 
It is not difficult, Colonel, to see that I wanted to do something useful, worthwhile, dangerous even. Isn't it true? One has to experience the fear of death to know what it is to feel truly alive. There. There. That was the place to break down stage. I knew it. Not at the opening of the speech, but there. Then you've got them. The means by which things fell suddenly, so irrevocably, into place. Oh, why, Colonel, in God's name, in the name of all that's holy and good and humane in the world, could you not have stepped off the curb and been hit by a car at that precise moment? But it didn't happen, did it? Very nice. Very nice. You bastard. You've been testing me. You set me up. Right, ladies and gentlemen, if we may rehearse the curtain call. Oh, I've been listening. John, old man. Jack, all these stairs down from the circle. You don't mind standing in for me, do you? <laughs> no, of course not. You bastard. Right then, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs> Take your cue to bow from, um... John! Uh, yes, yes, uh, John, in the centre. Watch him out of the corner of your eye. And don't start to bow until he does. And... One step forward, and clap, 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 and back, and taking it uh, from the centre again, and clap, 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 and another from um, um, in the centre. Yeah. You, you can smile at each other, it is allowed, and clap, 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 oh, clap, clap. Bastard. said that in October last, he was with a company in Newcastle, did not know the words, was ridiculously... Oh, Paul. Caught in the act. <laughs> looking for something? <laughs> he does not act. He is the frank, handsome sailor whose joyous laugh, bright eye, and sturdy, ringing voice bring life and hope to the darkest hour. Hmm. Notices. Let's hope I can suit the role to perfection as well. I'm rather frightened, John. No second takes in the theatre. Ring rusty. <laughs> Suppose I dry. Ah, no way. You really have got a photographic memory, mm, haven't you? Sometimes I think it's a curse. The, uh, the unforgivable, I know, letting myself into someone else's dressing room, but the key was in the door. I was looking for a space to leave this. Oh, good luck card, doesn't matter. Should Thanks. have slid it under the door. Quite a view you have up here. <laughs> Any higher, I'd be up above the clouds. You, you haven't changed a bit. <laughs> Except that now I really am the right age to play Madame. Aren't we all? Well. All the best tonight, Paul. Uh, chat up a critic or two in the interval, mate. See if you can get them to write notices as good as that one. <laughs> oh. How's Jen? Jen's fine. Great. I think. Notices? Was sure. As sure as in S-U-R-E? Yeah, yeah I think. Mm. Well, you'll find all Shaw's critical essays on this shelf. There are rather a lot. Well, blimey, he was a critical bastard, wasn't he? Oh, sorry. He was also a long-lived. Perhaps if you knew which year. Well, it would certainly have been before the 16th of December, 1897. <sighs> Satan saved at last. 9th of January. No, no, back a bit. Little aisle from now. Uh, ah, the Adelphi. All that glitters. Most fearful specimen of obsolete pinchback. Oh, Christ, what price Clive Barnes? Uh, Black eyed Susan. Real original. San Domingo Billy Blum. My sweet William. Hornpipe nautical linger. Ah! Mr. Terrace makes brilliant play with his diamond shoe buckles and delivers his jargon of the first two scenes. Like a conjurer producing miles of ribbon from his mouth. Dear God, it was William Terrace I saw. Why? You're late. It's gone the hard. Yeah, I know. Is Harris doing the rounds? You better get up those stairs. Uh, I'll stall him. Uh, Don't forget, circle bar, drinks after. Yes, I'm going to get legless.
already seated in his place, fifty years old and not yet dead. To act this most important role, we chose a lucky paranoic. Right then, we're off. This is your beginner's call, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to sit out front. Well, where will you be? Uh, front row, centre, the circle. Oh, yes, you bastard. You can see me here, bow and clap, clap, clap. Got me? Yeah, you've spotted me. Where you sat this morning, eh? Letting me get my juices going and cut me off at the knees. Oh, didn't we all laugh? Special bow, just for me, looking up at me. Gloating. Well, no, I, I didn't gloating. say... Say it, gloating. Bravo! Gloating. Bravo! Gloating. John O'Chip, Yeah, yeah, later, thanks. Well, darling, except for the odd hiccup. Yeah, yeah, and we all know who made them. Oh. Hi, Johnny. Uh, John, actually. Excuse me. Um, do you think he'll be coming out of his dressing room? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I really don't. I was here before. Yeah, no. Look, I won't be a minute. I won't be a minute. Thanks. Ah, uh, Paul, are you decent? Two ticks. Hello. Hello, darling. What's in there? This must be costing you a bomb suite. What? Uh, uh, what man? <laughs> what power? Who do? What? <laughs> uh, 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 come in. You have been summoned, old boy. No. It, it, it's... No. Excuse me. Oh, Christ. Oh, Christ. John. Spot of air? Hmm. Congratulations, Paul. I mean... Everyone, thank you, John. Well... Uh, you're not joining us upstairs? Uh, I'll, uh, I'll be along in a minute. Ah. Oh, um, you, um, you haven't seen Peter around, have you? No, no, I haven't. Ah. this stuff out of a cat. Honest to God, he asked Henrietta if she'd had a nose job. Uh, yeah, it was funny the first time. <laughs> Honestly, John, you were there, didn't you? Yeah, pillock. That pillock is a punter. Oh, excuse me for living. Do you think I've got anything other than cat balls? I'm starving. Balls on the form. <laughs> Ooh, he asked me what I'd played. I ask you. <laughs> the loting. Oh, oh, oh no. No, it's all right, it's all right. I'm going to spill it all Yes, it's, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Oh, Lizzie's pissed. Lizzie's pissed. Oh. <laughs> Don't you hate all this lovey bullshit? What did you join it for, then? Well, not for this, I can tell you. My equity card, that's all. Knock up the 20 weeks, then I'm off into telly, mate. Tell you something else. Mm -hmm. I watched you. You're better than Paulie, boy. What did you say? Oops. Chill out, man. No, 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 no. You should be playing that part. Run that past me again, will you? Well, I said I think you're better than... <coughs> hey! And from what depths of your lengthy experience as a professional actor do you draw this brilliant observation, right. chum? I was only big. Being what? Well, in my professional... Professional? John. You know what professional is, you wet little tyke? Professional is loyalty, especially when punters are around. Professional is that bloke over there. 
You were strutting the boards when you were missing your nappies. But you're hurting Professional me. Professional courtesy may have gone out the window in drama schools these days, but the day I need you to patronise me, hell freezes over. You got that? Yeah, got it. What, whatever you say, I, I'm sorry. No, I, I'm... I better get some air. Excuse me. How about that? Are you all right, Peter? Yeah, yeah. For a moment there, I thought he was going to kiss me. <laughs> <laughs> Christ, what's happening to me? Said he'd known the prisoner for over 20 years. He was very strange in his ways and very jealous. Workmen used to torment him, being always looked upon as a butt. He was a very vain man. Witness thought a doctor in Dundee saw the prisoner about his fits of passion, but Witness did not know his name. Stop the car. What? We're in the middle of nowhere. Stop! John, I've got sound tapes to get in and we're late. Please! Never give actors lifts. Great. A lonely road somewhere between Dundee and Aberdeen. Back up a bit, can you? If you want to take no, a No, 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 no. I, I, I saw something. Just, just back about a hundred yards, will you? There. See it? What? All I can see is swirling fog. No, no. To your left a bit, see? Across the field, a tree or something. There's, there, there's something hanging from it. I can't see Oh, wind the window down. What? It's freezing. Wind the bloody... Wi Listen. All I can hear is the wind. I thought I saw... Oh, so... you mean that hawthorn tree? Oh, you can see it, then. Vaguely, but nothing hanging from it, though. Oh, not I... now. It was just fleeting out of the corner of my eyes. We passed. I, I, I thought... <laughs> Told you. You've been hitting the Newcastle Browns too hard all week. <sighs> yeah. Here's my key, laddie. Key. Key. A key, please. Yeah, morning. Morning. Do you have my key, please? Who are you? I'd like to drop off my stuff. Name? Uh, Stanger, John. Lang? No, Stanger. Which dressing room am I in? Uh, Stanger. Yeah. There's no one with that name on my list. What do you... Uh... Understudy. Oh, you're down in the... Uh... Oh. Hitler's bunker. Here you are, all alone. No, no, you're never alone with two dozen mirrors. See, that's him and him and him and him. <laughs> and they all bear a startling resemblance to you. Oh, I don't know. That's a remarkably good-looking bird in that one. <laughs> you uh, left some books and papers in my boot. Oh, tough. He's a handsome man. Well, isn't that just what I've been saying? <laughs> no, the old photo. Fell out of your books. Oh, old Breezy Bill, yeah. An actor? Oh, sorry, I'm being nosy. I thought it might be someone you were writing about. Oh, you noticed that too. <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to work up a one-man show about him, but lately someone else seems to want to hog the limelight. <sighs> well, you've got plenty of coat hooks to choose from down here. And you didn't come down to my chorus room to admire my coat hooks. What's Harris got you onto now? Ironing prop tablecloths? No. Our brilliant young acting ASM fresh out of RADA has actually turned up in time to do the get-in this week. The arrogant little shit should be grateful he has such an understanding DSM to carry the can for him. Oh, I think the arrogant little shit realises that now. It may surprise you to know that he likes you. Oh. Why do you do that? Do what? Right on the mirrors. 
I noticed you did it in Newcastle, too. T-A-M-A-R. Ah, oh, it's my secret last laugh. It's in the West, isn't it? Is that where you're from, the Tamar? If I told you what it meant, it would no longer be my secret last laugh now, would it? <laughs> OK. <laughs> Actually, it stands for take the money and run. <laughs> Hang in there, John. Mm. Hang in there, John. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, this is your Act One beginner's <clears throat> call. Oh, Miss Fox, Miss James, Mr <clears throat> Belling, Ten feet Mr Jackson up. and Mr Schlund. Oh. oh, that's better. <sighs> As I sat there in the Bastille for 13 long years... I learned my lines for tomorrow's understudy rehearsal. No, I didn't. In that loneliness marooned in a stone sea. Come in. Come in. Oh, don't then. Who's at the door? The girl from Cong. <laughs> What the hell made me think of that after all these years? Uh, a little light music on the tranny to calm the fevered brow, Waddy. Oh, blast, I'm below ground level. <sighs> Listen, Mara. Can you hear through the walls how they plot and whisper? It's off. And Louvet. Brissot. Uh, the tannoy is off. Vergio. Uh, and Gaudet. Uh, the bloody thing's off. Johnson. Uh, the car for the airfield has arrived, sir. General Talbot's tanks are withdrawing. Yes, I'm not deaf, Lieutenant Crumier. Sound Q3. Go. Mr. Anstruther, this is your call. Uh. It was off. I definitely switched it off. Oh dear God, I'm going round the bend. Good morning, sir. Can I help you? Uh, yes, I, uh, I'm interested in an Inverness Macintosh. An Inverness? Oh, it's a fine waterproof garment, but I'm afraid we have none in stock. There's not much call for them these days. Are you sure it's an Inverness you're interested in, sir? Well, it's, um, sleeveless, like a cloak with a sort of cape, right? Huh? A removable cape, that's correct, sir. Is this what I thought? Mr Stanger, you are off. Repeat, you are off. John, you're late for rehearsal. Witness said he was in the alley, leading from... Harris uh, is going spare up there. The long Inverness Macintosh he was wearing. John, you're oh. already in Harris's incident book. Oh, God. I need a detailed description. Uh, he had something wrong with his right eye. Who did? Him, the other man. What man? Oh, don't let's start that one again. He follows me, you know. Sometimes I think... Oh, never mind. Hey, wait a minute. Now, he didn't die until 1937. Now, there has to be a photograph. Is it 192 for director inquiries in Scotland? What? Jen? Richard Archer, Prince, 1905. Mm hmm Jen? Hello? Hmm? Oh, I'm just checking through my morning mail. Didn't have time to read it at home. Bit of a mess there at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry, Ellie. Yes, yes. Uh, break them for coffee. Back in studio in um, ten minutes, please. All right. Hmm. Re Richard Archer Prince. As promised, I now enclose a copy of a photograph taken of the above named in 1905. Should you wish to donate a sum to the patient's benevolent fund, may I suggest that you send a check? Hmm.
Broadmoor Hospital. Well, we definitely had a request for his picture, and that was the address given for it to be sent to. J. Stanger, that was right, wasn't it? Oh, yes, I see now. It must have been my husband. We have the same initial. That would explain it, then. He didn't happen to mention why he wanted it. No, just that he was most anxious to know what Richard Prince looked like. He seemed most excited when I told him we actually had a photograph in archives. It's quite rare. Well, thank you. I'm sorry to bother you on a weekend. Oh, we never close. <laughs> Neither do we. Bye. Dear God, John. What would you want with this? Gives me the shivers. Mm. Oh. Ah! Who's there? Ah! Ah! John? Yeah. Oh, what the bloody hell is doing in the middle of the floor? God, you're in Scotland. I flew down. Private jet, Mr Rockefeller? BA flight 82, Aberdeen Heathrow, and took an hour. Why? You're up in Darlington tomorrow. So? I fly back from Heathrow to Teesside. Only costs a few quid more than BR. Well, you could say, hello, darling, what a lovely surprise. Hello, darling, what a lovely surprise. I didn't expect to see you for several weeks. Oh. And are all these uh, bits and pieces lying around the floor intended for packing in the tea chest, against which I have just dislocated my right patella? Or have you taken up wholesale tea importing as a sideline? I'll make some coffee. Instant, all right? Yeah. Sugar? Ah, uh, no, thanks. A letter came for you. In the fruit bowl there. Thanks. I'm sorry, I opened it by mistake. Yep. Richard Archer Prince. Broadmoor, 1905. John? No, don't... Don't turn around, just give me a minute. Here. Coffee. No sugar. Thanks. Careful! The photograph, you'll spill the coffee over. Oh, my hand's shaking, I'm sorry. Who is he? My line, I think. Of course, there's someone else. Yes. Who is it, Jen? Not a he. Oh, now I've heard him. Me, everything. John, me. I'm the someone else. I just need some space. But we're married, goddammit. Oh, don't give me that sanctity bit. Hell, John, do you imagine I don't know how many young actresses' knickers you've been into over the yeah, years? Yeah, but they never meant anything. Oh, no, good God, the philandering love is lament down the years. <sighs> Bisto. What? Well, in my cup, it's not instant coffee, it's Bisto. Oh. <sighs> Everything changes, John. Breezy Bill might have had his bit on the side round the corner. But his understudy... Who? Who, for the sake of argument, we'll call Breezy John... What on earth you... Just blown out of the door, eh? And the other man moves in here. What man? Well, the man with the power, Jen. And this is where you say, what power? And then I say, the power of voodoo. Who do you do? What? Yeah, that's the one. Goes round and round in a self-perpetuating rhyme. We've resorted to it for years, haven't we? When we were playing mucking about or lost for words or anticipating a little nookie. A nookie joke, yes? Let's not joke. Oh, I'm not joking. This is rather nice. Hot bisto? Yes, I'd rather like it. Oh, I don't know. Perhaps if we did another kid. No. Let's not bring that up. Um, I was going to move out of the flat. No, no, you stay here. I'll get somewhere. What about your things? Leave them. Till the tour finishes, anyway. Oh, was there anything else in the mail? A few bills, circulars. Oh, and one rather curious telephone message gave no name. He just said, John, then not yet. Not yet? <laughs> well, it wasn't quite right about that, was it? Oh, God, John. I didn't mean you to find out this way. But I haven't yet, have I? Why won't you believe me? There is no other man. Why are you looking at me like that? I name Barbaroo and Buzo 
and Pétion and Louvet. Brissot, Vergio, Godet and Janson. What makes you think of that? Oh, you remember the lines too. Could any student involved in those crazy experiments ever forget them? The Marassad. I'll get the locks changed. You'd better do that. Grant and Padgett. Oh, hi. This is uh, Jake C. Stranger, Jr. I understand that you represent Mr. Paul Anstruther. Mr. Anstruther is our client, yes. We don't usually bother to list a client's radio drama credits, Mr. Stranger. Uh, junior, ma'am. We'd have to comb through all our... Records. We at Disney have such a high regard for the voice. Disney, yes. Uh, while you're at it, why don't you list the names of the radio producers who directed him right alongside those credits? We'd sure like to know who they were. Oh, thanks for the use of the phone. No, Gwyn is happy to serve, usual. Uh, yeah, make it a scotch, will you? A double. You look done in. Yeah, it's up. I spent the night in a flea pit by a Victoria coach station. Turned out to be a knocking shop. Plumbing turned on every 20 minutes. <laughs> Wife kick you out, did she? Yes, as a matter of fact. Oh, could have found a better place than that for a bit. It's all that there's left of Eaton Court. What do you mean, love? I need to work something out about myself. And have you? No, not yet. Ah, uh, come in for a spot of Dutch curry, Jay. Oh, yes. As much as I can muster. What's going on across the alley? No, oh, builders. Bloody dust. Find your back! Oh, what are they doing? Gutting it? Yep, the old Adelphi's being completely refurbished. Uh, I don't suppose the stage doorkeeper's around. That's me. Well, temporarily, anyway. Oh. Uh, this this bricked-up doorway, um, that's the old entrance for artists, isn't it? That's true. I have been bricked up for years. So, I'd be standing right about the spot William Terrace was stabbed in, in the 1890s. <laughs> yeah, that's where Breezy Bill bought it, yeah. And he didn't say a word. <laughs> Would you, with half a bread and rice stuck in your guts? <laughs> You seem to know something about it. Uh, yeah, it keeps some tie leaflets at the stage door. Yeah, for tourists. I've got interested. Ah, here we are. Dressing room number one. Go on. It's not locked. Oh, uh, and if anybody catches you up here, I don't know anything about it, right? Are there men living such fools as to think there is no hereafter? Fred Latham was stage dormant in your day, and if he's to be believed, that's what you said to him just before you died in here. Well, Bill, I'm here. My guts feel like water, but I'm here, and I can't think of a better place. Here, laddie, take my key. What is it you were trying to tell me before that bloody train came in? Oh, come on, Bill. Before my nerve gives out. Behind me. Hang in there, Stanger. Something, something. Well, turn around, that's what you came for. Don't go about now. Turn around! It's a pigeon, a bleeding pigeon! You find anything interesting up there? Nah. Oh, uh, well, it's pretty much stripped. Yeah. You look disappointed. A daft as a brush, more like. Oh, found one of those leaflets. Oh. A bit dusty, but... Oh, uh, tart when I read on the plane. Listen, I owe you one. That's right. When you come to cast your plate, you won't forget me, right? <laughs> right. Listen, I hope something comes up for you soon. Um, something else on your mind? Well, no. Well, yes, actually. 
Do you believe there's such a thing as, as the supernatural? Well, I'm an actor. I don't whistle in dressing rooms, that sort of thing, but not much more than that, no why. No, no, just, just humour me. This place, for example. Well, there have been strange knockings on doors upstairs. Yeah? And in 1960, a couple of stagehands were working late. There was just one working light on. The temperature seemed to drop. And then, according to them, a strange form floated across the stage. So, he's appeared in other parts of the theatre, then? A peripatetic spook, you might say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Something's still bothering you. Well, it's daft, I know, but all this upheaval here, and I suppose... It's a... Oh, no, 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 I was pretty pissed at the time. Oh, well, nothing else to do. Well, s supposing all this upheaval, suppose... Suppose it disturbed a spirit. Caused him to, um... Well, I, I don't know, wander further afield. <laughs> no, forget it, I was drunk. How oh, you mean Common Garden Tube? Oh, that, that'll do for starters. A bloke called Jack Aiden in the 1950s. He was a ticket collector. He reckoned this bloke in a grey suit came up to him, tried to say something and then disappeared through the wall. And nobody else saw it? No. But four days later, a young porter, a locker I think his name was, he said something touched him on the arm. He looked up, a man in a grey suit smiled, did the same disappearing act. Locker like screamed and ran like hell. And did either of them say anything about, um, white gloves or being offered anything? Like I said, they didn't hang around. But they both agreed a picture of William Terrace resembled the bloke they'd seen. And there have been other London transport staff who've seen him, late as 1962. And there's no record, I suppose, of, of what happened to them after these incidents. They all asked for transfers. <laughs> I suppose they all leaved a sigh of relief. Yes. Yeah. Um, nothing more recent? No. Uh, oh, well... Uh, better make a move. I've got a plane to catch. Yeah, you get straight rid of Ephra on the Piccadilly line. Yeah. Hey, just a minute. The Piccadilly line wasn't built then. There was no Covent Garden tube station in William Terrace's day. Yeah, it wouldn't make any difference to a ghost, would it, passing through? That's the plane, sir. Change for a cup of tea. change. Um, one more thing. There's never been any record of another presence here. Someone else. Just breezy, Bill, if you believe in hauntings. I'm rather afraid that I do. Oh, careful, mate. That way lies the funny farm. <laughs> so there goes Mad Archer, they would say. Hold the doors, chum! Almost missed it! Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Philly called Common Sense, ridden by Tommy Let It Alone. Nothing of interest happened at the sales conducted by Harry Price in 1928, but actress Jessie Millwood swore that the chaise long had vibrated. A green light in her mirror, a number of light blows on the arm. A couple of light taps on the dressing room door. Terrace was in the habit of tapping a couple of times with his stick on the door of his leading lady's dressing room as he passed. A little reminder that he was in the theatre. His leading lady's dressing room? That would have been number two. Damn it, I was in the wrong one. Well, we're sharing one this week, are we? Yes. Do you mind? Mind? Why should I mind? Here. I'll just clear a space for you. Oh, hang on. <laughs> um, that <clears throat> stupid damn thing I said to you at the first night do. Forgotten. <laughs> I, I don't want to interrupt your writing. That is it something of an ampass at the moment. Yeah. Right. Now you can see that shiner of yours in glorious Technicolor. <laughs> you want to talk about it? I can't. Hmm. You, uh... Don't get on much with the others, do you, Peter? 
Chess. Do you play chess? Yes. Do you? No, not a clue. You can teach me over the week. Uh, done. <laughs> <laughs> Drops ASM to Mr. <clears throat> Anthony Rotherman, number one dressing yeah. room. Quick as you can, please, Peter. Mm, that's me. That's you. <laughs> John. Yes? Oh, nothing. An impasse. What an understatement. It was you, Richard Archer Prince, following me. Uh, what's the matter, prisoner said. Witness replied, you know what's the matter. Yes, I can feel you close by. And now I'm terribly afraid you're inside here with me. Heard the news? News? We're going in! The old witch! Old witch? <sighs> Just act. You're good at that. Molly. <laughs> Hello, Dad. <laughs> Welcome to Oxford. <laughs> well, are we uh, eating then? Uh, there's a little place just off the high. Uh, the guy for not joining us? Uh, he couldn't get away. <sighs> I fart. Oh, you have to be very careful how you say that. I wish you wouldn't talk about him like that. Like what? Well, Dickie's very nice. I'm sure it is, love. Oh, Dad, don't be so vulgar. The rest of him I find so colourless. Get to the point of this meeting. Oh, go away. No, it's just a menu. It looks like the Magna Carta. You made it patently clear you couldn't stand Dickie last time you met him. You mean when I was drunk and spilled cake bitter all down his yacht club blazer? A Berkshire hunt. Even worse. Now then. Tony oh, Ananas. That's uh, shortcake with nuts, isn't it? As a matter of fact, there are times when he does rather get on my tits. Well... I hope for my little girl, yes. Mum's told you, of course. She's worried about you, Dad. Oh, I don't know, Mole. Having a lot of trouble with this, your old dad. Mr. Jake C. Stranger, Jr. Over the biochemistry's facts. Oh, thanks. Disney Corporation, honestly, Dad. Well, it couldn't come direct to me, could it? Oh, now, this is interesting. Seems Mum has worked with Paul Anstruther quite a bit in the past. Oh. Mm. Directed him in two, five, nine radio plays, no less, and then never again. Stopped quite suddenly, five years ago. Really? Mm. Just about the time she had the abortion. Dad? It's Dad! I want to... As I was walking... Stand in front of him stairs. and... I met him. Look at him, I want man. to. He wasn't there. See his body tremble he and wasn't there. Again his forehead bubble with I wish to God he'd sweat. I wish to God he'd sweat. I'm gonna get you, you bastard. Right where it hurts. This is your beginners, ladies and gentlemen. John! Where is he? You're late. Where is he? Mr. Belling, that's what we'd like to know. Paul! Paul? It's Peter who's missing. Why are you dressed up like that? Oh, God, there's a front of house manager again. Look, we can't hold it any longer. Oh, nothing for it. Peter? We have go, ladies and gentlemen. Cue house lights. Our marvellous acting ASM disappeared. Someone's got to take his place. Take it off. What? The bloody uniform. I'll stand in. Come on. You don't know the lines. Paul's waiting OP for his green to enter, isn't he? Only Harris can authorise. John, you don't know the The car's lines. arrived for the airfield. More coffee, Colonel. Come on. Press his bloody cue light. But, Paul, he'll have no warning. Good. You know what it is to feel truly alive? The means by which things fell so... Suddenly, so irrevocably into place, would not meet with your approval. Interesting, isn't it? Uh, who knows? We might even have passed each other in the street in Palestine. We were there at the same time. We, we might have bumped into each other. It's easy enough to do in all that crowd. I would have removed my hat, you yours, mumbled apologies, and gone our separate ways. <laughs> well, that chair, my lady said, reminds me a little of Leslie Howard. You would have occupied no more than a second or two of my course. A mere speck on the arm of time. It flicks it off with no more thought. It rid itself of an annoying itch. Yet in this moment we stand before each other, knock, knock. Knock, knock. What's he doing? 
Really, if, if it is the second time we've... John, not yet! What's going on? Who's that? The girl from Cole. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Lieutenant Kruby! Stop him! Too late! I step out of my place and watch what happens without joining in, observing, noting down my observations and all around me stillness. <laughs> uh, Lieutenant Kruby, I... I, uh... I don't think I rang for you... yet. Didn't you, sir? I'll just sit here, then. Oh. <clears throat> John, get off! So, uh... Why, Colonel, in God's name, in the name of all that's holy and good and humane in the world, could you not have stepped off the curb and been hit by a car at that precise moment? But it didn't happen, did it? Uh, what? I said, it didn't happen, Colonel. Uh, no. Well, uh, thank you, uh, Lieutenant... Um... Uh, Crumey. Oh, Christ. Now, uh, where were we? Do you still hunt? You're not saying much, Lieutenant Crumey. No. Uh, mm. Yes, well... Uh... Well, I, I think it's time for some coffee. Uh, Lieutenant Crumey, won't you go to bring in It's some? on the table there. Already, sir. Uh, do you ride, my hair? That's my... Yeah, I, I, I'm afraid not. I, I like walking, though. Sugar! Walking? I used to hike for miles when I was a lad. Boots, slid hoses... Our guest has no sugar Did you? for his coffee. Mm, yes, I, I used to hike for miles. My Angling mind. now, there's a pastime. Uh, fly, of course. Perhaps you'd go and get our guest some sugar, crew here. Well, I will then. <laughs> What do I do? What's going on? I'm sitting in my dressing room waiting for my call and John, he won't come off. Oh, solitary pursuit. Oh, he's swapping lines. The strong man must regain the pure conscience of a beast of prey. They've swapped lines. Yeah. He went out of his mind, didn't he? Paul! What, what's the matter with Paul? Prompt, prompt. Well, which line they've swapped? Oh, get him back on cue. But John isn't supposed to be on. Do it! He went. He went round of his mind, didn't he? Well, he probably did if he had to sit through the ring from end to end. <laughs> yeah, mine here, you have an extremely benign but deft way of prodding a man's defences. Oh, they're still swapping lines. My lines. Crumey isn't even on. It this. doesn't matter. Get back on. What? what? Just what? get back on. Oh, shit. Belling's shot to pieces. Let me go. No, 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 no. You'll only complicate matters, Ben. Why are they just sitting there staring at each other? Audience hasn't noticed anything yet. Would you? Oh, you can cut the atmosphere with a knife, I oh, was going to have to say something in a minute, or they'll sus. Paul, speak. How long to the interval? Too long. Can we cut the lights? Stand by to improvise. Keep your cans tight on your ears up there in the flies. LX are pre-programmed. I can't. Nietzsche had his lucid moments. First, dominate. Second, administer. Third, exploit. The Fuhrer. Thank God they're back in the right order. Except the Krumi is not supposed to be on stage and Belling's sitting there letting him take all his lives. Oh, who's counting? Let's just get through this bloody act. The little man craves to be shown the way out of his own crushing mundanity. He wants to feel special, chosen, part of some momentous moment. His fear, his terror, is to be left out. Admit it, my hair. Oh, they've switched roles again. You came here because you felt you might be missing something. I'd say that was entirely possible. But underneath, your f you fear my kind because I, I show you that you are just putty in my hand. I confess you are a mystery to me, Colonel. Something in the mentality, some genetic aberration, perhaps. You are doubtless going to throw this in my face, my hair. But wasn't it Santayana who wrote, those who do not remember the past are condemned to relive it? Do you know when that first came home to me? When you sat there in the Bastille for 13 long years. What? That's not in the script. Oh, 
Paul's gone. He's dried stone cold. Marooned in a stone sea, I heard lips whispering continually. Felt all the time in the palms of my hands and in my skin. I touching don't... Touching and stroking. No. I dreamed only of the orifices of the body put there so one may hook and twine oneself in them. Continually I dreamed of this confrontation. What? And it was a dream of the most savage, jealous, and cruelest imagining. Mara! Bring down the arm. I can't. John's directly under it. It'll kill him. Kill the lights, then. The controls at the back of the auditorium. Master switch. Take an intercom. Stand by to throw it if I give the word. Now, basement. Quick. Peter! Oh, you're bleeding. Did, did John? No. Not John. Not John. Mara. Did I say that? I must have meant... How's that? How's that? How's that? Now, How's that? I can How's see that? into your mind. How's that? And How's I that? say... How's that? No. How's that? And I go How's that? to murder you. How's that? Mara. How's that? Where the hell is he, Lindy? I've left message after message at one stage door after another. He just won't return my calls. Surely he has to check in with the company even if the tour's finished. He left his agent's number for messages. We don't open at the Aldwych till next week, and technically there's no reason why he shouldn't do a disappearing act during a week out if he wants to. But? Oh, the rest of the run at Oxford went fine. Peter got a rollicking for locking himself in the generator room, then went on as Lieutenant Crewmy for Act Two as normal. Mm. John went back to being Paul's understudy. The waters closed over, so to speak. Oh, I just can't put my finger on it. Go on. What is it between him and Paul? I think all of us watching sensed something. It was like a kind of telepathy. Well, that's what good acting is, surely. Of course. But? But that happens on stage. It's as if... Well, this is going to sound so totally off the wall, but it's as if someone else has come off stage as well. Oh, there's... Oh, what else have you got, Mark? Your breezy bill? No. No. Jen, do you want buzzers or bells or knockers? But I'm beginning to understand what the poor bugger was going through. Jen? Someone else. Hmm? No, something else. Big Ben, do you think? Hmm, fine. In a prefab in Southall? Hmm? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Mark, can you pop down to the FX store and find something practical? A common or garden buzzer will do. The tape? Hmm? What? The tape. You were going to edit at home, did you? Oh, yeah. It's in my bag. Here it is. I'll put it on. See what you think. 1897, Mr. Frederick Lane, who understudies Mr. Terrace in the part of Captain Damn, Thorne. I picked the wrong one up. This is one of John's. He said, I dreamt about What's the matter, Jen? Oh. Ellie, would you mind? I need some time to myself for a bit. I'll go and help Mark. Someone else. Someone else. The fact that he could not get employment would aggravate his mental condition, and all the distress and anxiety which he suffered then would make his condition worse. That doesn't sound like you. It isn't. But I'm beginning to understand what the poor bugger was going through. Frederick Lane? I tried to forget it during the day, but tonight again when I came to the theatre, I was going down Bedford Street when something seemed to say, do not go there. I went round to Maiden Lane, and there I saw him. Who? Who? I did not know him personally, and he said nothing to me, so I walked on. Shit! His appearance struck me as peculiar. Round the theatre, he was generally known as Mad Archer. I'm sorry, I opened it by mistake. Yep. John! No! Don't turn round. Give me a minute. 
Richard Archer Prince. I had heard of his resentment of Mr. Terrace's success as an old super... Supernumerary understudy. That the previous evening he had been told that Mr. Terrace did not wish to see him again. He is stated to have gone away murmuring, not yet. Oh. Is my imagination running away with me? I walked on and then a few minutes afterwards heard a great noise. It appeared that whilst Mr. Terrace had been bending to find his keys, Archer stepped out and stamped. What is it between him and Paul? I name Barbaro and Bouzeau and Petion and Louvet. Well, his understudy, who for the sake of I argument we'll call Breezy John, what on earth you? gets blown out of the door, eh? And Louvet. Oh, my God! Wrong. Wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. Maurice, I want to know where he is. Look, I gave him my word. I, I only have a number, but I can't Maurice. give Maurice. Him... Stanger, that's right. Top floor, left the... Look, all I have is a number. Where are you exactly? Just off Buckingham Palace Road. Great. He's not in. He's gone out. Dead chuffed I was, imagine. Inspector Drew from the telly, ringing in. I Inspector Drew? You mean Paul Anstruther? He's gone to meet Paul Anstruther? <gasps> Hello? 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 Oh. The alley's been blocked off. Paul? Down here, John. Shall we be down here? The builders have gone home for the day. Oh. But the Nell Gwynn's closed. Now, this'll do. Fine. You dress for rain? Can't afford to catch a cold a week off opening. Oh. Or perhaps you hope I might, eh? No, of course I don't. You're staring at me, John. How did you get my number, Paul? Uh, money. Talks. Yes, I see. Morris. You are still staring at me, John. It was you, wasn't it? Excuse me, mister. Can you spill me some gin? Why? Peter's left the cast, you know. The week's telly during rehearsals. Following me all over the place. How did you feel, John? When you discovered it was me who were to understudy? Me of all people. Well, I went through a few emotional hoops. It's true. For, for a minute there, I wanted did to... Did you ever ask yourself how I felt? I, I, I don't I know mean, what you mean. you, of all people... The one man I... But I, I'm through it now. The Marat Saad. Remember it? Well, how could anyone involved in those crazy experiments you forget? You and me. Remember? And we haven't worked with each other since those student days. Once <laughs> both of us spoke a single tongue. Of brotherly love we sweetly sung. But love meant one thing to you, I see. And something quite different to me. Oh, Christ. I was blind. I had no idea. You left me, John. You hadn't even noticed. You went off with Jen. You broke my heart, laddie. Paul. That was nearly 30 years ago. Laddie, take my keys. Haven't you been listening? Peter's left me. You took Peter. Peter! 30 empty years, and now I want to. Christ! Why? I am down like a piece of wood. I'm not Prince. I'm you. Terrace! Away from me! Oh, oh Sean! Peter! 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 It 
It's all over now. <sighs> oh, you must have hated me all those years. It was me he hated, not you. Well, then why... Didn't you stab me? Oh, thanks very much. <laughs> I'm sorry. What happened five years ago, Jen? You, you were away, doing rep in York. I was directing a play for Radio 3 starring Paul. The first thing, and he was having difficulties. Well, you can't give an actor too many notes down on the studio floor, can you? We came back here to work. I went into the kitchen to rustle us up something to eat. When I came out, he was at the desk, nosing through your breezy bill stuff. I asked him to put them down. He wouldn't. He seemed highly amused. Something about parallels with himself. I thought he was talking about William Terrace. Then he became abusive about you. I got a bit angry. Then he hit me. I miscarried. Why did you let me think you had an abortion? I was afraid of what you might do if you ever found out. I might not be able to help myself, you mean? Oh, that bloody play. It had such a profound effect on us all. It's ironic, really. You don't know how ironic. That's what Breezy Bill must have appreciated most. Old Breezy? A few months before that poor, half-starved, paranoic stabbed him to death, his wife suggested he play Mara. Oh, no, said Bill. Couldn't stand that bit with a knife. Exactly 48 hours after his murder, the Adelphi, in a monumental piece of cynical opportunism, presented the play. The place was packed. But, uh, well, he was only an actor. Now, he was trying to warn me, Jen, of what could be done to me. Most of all, what I was doing to myself. He wasn't there. I saw him. John William Terrace has been dead for 96 years. Well, can we go for a walk? I'm sick of lying in bed. Right. You'll need a jacket. Mm. Oh, sorry. I forgot to take it to the cleaners. That's all right. Fit? Mm. John? What is it? In my pocket. It's a key. A Delphi number one. Ma me mi me ma mo mu mo. In The Understudy by Joe Anderson. John was played by Nigel Anthony. Jen by Francis Jeter. And Paul by Michael N. Harbour. Lindy was played by Caroline Strong. The Other by Peter Whitman. Belling by Barry J. Gordon. Morris by Neville Jason, Harris by Fraser Carr, Molly by Kathy Sara, Frank by Terry John, Henrietta by Gay Brown, Peter by Tom Bevan, Ben by Paul Panting, Lizzie by Elaine Claxton, the lift operator by Lyndon Gregory, Jen's PA by Teresa Gallagher, the Geordie Dorman by Sean Prendergast, and the barmaid by Joe Anderson. The play was directed by Adrian Bean.